John Texera is from a fourth-generation farming family in California's San Joaquin Valley. He farms organic beans, grains, tomatoes, and livestock. He's passionate about using organic farming practices that build soil health, protect water quality, save water, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We live right next to the San Joaquin River. I can almost throw a rock. You know, the river's really important. And it's kind of, you know, I, I think it's really sacred down there. It's been there for a long time and we want to protect it. We're always very careful on our applications that are done, you know, in the spring or in the fall before the big rain so we don't lose any of our nutrients into the river. John became interested in growing crops without chemical fertilizers and pesticides about 30 years ago. Instead of nitrogen fertilizers, he adds compost and rotates planting of legumes called cover crops to add fertility to his soil. So I'm building, I didn't have to buy no nitrogen, I just grew it. And I think that is the key to organics in the future. If I can keep this system going, I don't have to buy no nitrogen, that's cool. It's money in the bank. The compost and the cover crops create organic matter in the soil that stores carbon, keeping it out of the atmosphere where it causes climate damage. And it helps that soil hold on to water. The predicament we're in in, in in the West, in California, is we have a lot of people uh, and water is not that abundant. What I'm trying to do is to increase my organic matter with my compost so I can maybe save an irrigation a year or something, save, save water somehow. And I think that's a goal everyone has to do in the future is to conserve water because we're, we're becoming a desert. And so this is, this is my sponge. The USDA offers grants for on-farm conservation practices that reduce greenhouse gases and protect air and water quality and wildlife habitat. For example, John has received grants to build owl boxes for controlling pests like gophers. I didn't have to trap as much or use any uh, alternative uh, uh, chemicals to get rid of the gophers. And so uh, it worked really well and it, it uh, helped the uh, uh, population go down. I've counted as many as nine here. I mean, they're like hooting along. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Drink a glass of wine, listen to the owls. Though there is broad public support for these programs, they have to be constantly defended against budget cuts. That's why John has reached out to his elected representatives. Several years ago, I was uh, asked to go in the middle of the summer to Washington, D.C., and I didn't realize that how on a one-on-one -on -one basis in that office with your local congressman or senator that it makes a difference and they do appreciate farmers. They get excited when you show up and you know what? They listen. They want to know what's going on on the farm. John says it's important for the public and policymakers to understand good public investments can encourage more farmers to be good stewards for our shared natural resources. I'm just part of the, the food web, uh, and I think it's, uh, we can grow and have a healthy product for everyone.